Howdy folks, so we are going to move on into our part design using part studio exercises. And the first one we have is um, using extrude, so exercise extrude. Now I've gone ahead, I made uh, a folder and I've populated it with a few part studios just so I have them ready to go. Um, so again, we're working on extrude. And our first step here is to make sure, again, we have workspace units in millimeters. They want us working in metric. And I am going to go ahead and create a sketch on my top plane. Uh, let's hop into top view as well. So that's our step number one. Step number two, it asks to us to draw something. Now, uh, I'm just going to pop this up here if I can. Um, let's see here. It's kind of intense, so it's, it's better for us to look at it together. We need to draw from our, let's say this is our origin point right here, a circle, a circle, a rectangle, construction line, um, some other lines, and circle, circle, circle. So um, it's a big sketch, uh, better for us to look at it together. Um, and now I can pop this back on down below and we can get a model in. So um, I'm gonna start with a circle, make that first circle. Now I'm gonna make a second circle, make it smaller. Um, and let's just stick to using the circle tool. I'm also going to make uh, a circle out here and a second circle that's a little bit bigger. And I'm using that yellow guideline to stay horizontally in line with everything. Uh, another circle and one more. Now finally, um, we need to make a rectangle. And uh, the big, big thing here needs to be a center point rectangle. Um, so start it from the origin, make a rectangle here. Now, uh, as we saw before, I need to make a line here and here and there to there. Um, I'm going to use my line tool. I'm not going to start it from this top center. I'm going to be deliberate and start it out here somewhere. Um, and we got a line. Escape. I'm going to hit L. Whoops. Had a little mistake there. And I'm going to make another line down below. You'll see it's actually starting to tell me, hey, do you want this thing to be tangent? It's actually... I'm kind of cool with that. You see that little tangent constraint that pops up. Hit L, hit escape, hit L, one more. Can we make it tangent? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so now we have a closed uh, sketch. We got everything shaded. That means it's all good. Nothing is going to go too awry. And I need to make one more thing here. I need to make a construction line up here. So for that, we can hit L and Q and we can draw a line, a construction line going straight up. Now what I'm also gonna do right now, I'm just gonna turn off my front and my right planes because I, I don't need them right now. Um, and I'm gonna hit next. So uh, for slide three, it asks us, hey, like we need to start making some constraints. Um, one big thing, the small circles need to be equal to each other. The bigger circles on either side need to be equal to each other. Um, and then it's telling us, hey, um, we also need to make these lines tangent to these circles, which I already kind of started doing. So we'll see, we'll see how we fare in a second. So first things first, let's make the small circles equal to each other. So equal, 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 done. Now let's play around with tangent. So tangent, um, I believe we click on uh, the line and the circle, and that's how we can check to make sure things are tangent. So tangent, the line, and the circle. Tangent, the line, and the circle. I already kind of did that, so it's, it should be fine. Um, now let's make this line tangent to this circle. So the line, circle. There we go. The line, circle. The line, circle. One more, the line, circle. So tangent is the constraint we're using. I click on the line because I want the line to be tangent to this circle. Um, and I went around and these lines are tangent to both their outer circles and the inner circle. So um, now it's starting to come together and we have step three done. Again, we made stuff equal and now we make them tangent. So. The next step is to make these two circles on either side 
um, the same distance away from our center point. And the way we can do that is we can use our symmetric constraint. First thing we have to do is click on the center line, our construction line. Then we can click on the center point of our left circle, the center point of our right circle, and boom, they're now the same distance from the center. So that's step four. Step five, we got to start throwing in a bunch of dimensions. So I'm just going to start doing that. You can kind of follow along with me or you can do it on your own. Um, I'm going to work uh, outside in as best as I can. It's probably actually easier to go inside out, but I'm going to work outside in. Um, first thing we got to do is do the width of the whole thing. So I'm going to click on this circle on the left. I've already clicked on the dimension tool. I'm going to click on this circle on the right. I'm going to bring my dimension down and 250 is the, the, the total width. Now what we can do, I'm going to hit dimension, hit D again. I'm going to make uh, this circle out here 35 is what it says. Um, this inner circle here, dimension again, is 20. And note that we don't have to change the ones over here because we made these circles equal to these circles. So any changes we make are automatically reflected. Beauty of CAD. This center circle needs to be 70 millimeters, so let's make it 70. Uh, this inner circle here needs to be 35. And then now we're going to play around with our le rectangle a little bit. 45 width and 10 height. And that's it. That looks good. So if anything goes wrong, you may have not uh, had these lines tangent to the circles. Something may have been a little awry. You may need to back up and start over. Not too bad. Um, you'll get there. So we're done with the sketch. So we can hit the check. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go into isometric view. So I'm going to click isometric under the dropdown. And we want to do our first extrusion. So this is our first time going into 3D. Now, if we hit extrude or shift e we'll get our extrude menu and we need to click a few areas um, we want to extrude this part of our part um, now i can click here i can click here and i can click here and those are the areas it tells us in step six that we need to extrude um, we're going to do a blind extrusion so that's that's correct and then the depth we actually have to change to 40 millimeters um, and once you have that you can hit the check now, uh, you'll note uh, that our uh, other half of our sketch went away. You can just turn it back on. That's very easy. We just click on sketch one once and then turn it back on using the eye. Because um, what we actually need to do is extrude this piece of our sketch over here as well. So we're going to create a second extrude. And 25 millimeters sounds good. We're actually going to tell it to be an extrude add. And to select our faces or regions, we can select this piece here and this piece here. And it's automatically going to merge it with the part that we had already created, the thing that we just extruded. If it doesn't, you may have to click here and then click on this shape here, part one. Um, and once we have that, we can hit the check. Um, that is step seven. And just note, this part is 3D now. It's here. Uh, I can turn off my sketch if I want to. I can also turn off the top plane if I wanted to. Um, it's something that we can uh, view, we can create drawings of. I'm just going to rename it, and uh, I'm just going to rename it to what they want, which is bracket. And the second thing we're going to do is we are going to um, assign a material to this bracket, because in order to complete this exercise, we need to um, tell them uh, what it is. Um, so. Uh, what we can do, we can go under this drop down. It is steel 1020 is what they want. And basically it gives it materials properties so that in a moment you can check underneath of uh, weight and you can actually get mass. Oh, and uh, w one other thing. Uh, if you click on your part and you realize that the mass is in uh, pounds and you don't want that because you need to get your answer in kilograms, workspace units, pop that open, change your default to kilogram for mass unit and then go ahead and hit check and it should be correct now all right properties of um, this thing and that is the next step um, you need to select your part and you need to do mass properties but the first thing you got to do is assign it a material uh, and that material according to uh, the tutorial is steel 1020
20. It's just a type of uh, steel has a certain uh, material property and density. So that is how to do exercise extrude. Um, once you get this and you do the self check, you can plug in that mass properties number uh, and you're good to go. Let me know if you have any issues with it. Um, pretty simple, one sketch, two extrudes. We're doing that extrude add business. Um, and next we're gonna move on to uh, Revolve, a little sweet tool. It's great for making wheels and stuff like that. This is just a, any old part that we would ever need to make in 3D print or machine. Um, the next one is good for wheels, uh, different types of toys, that sort of thing. So I'll see you then. All right, bye-bye. <laughs>